Auto Line on the Road at Cars MBS has been brought to you by Borg Warner. With special thanks to the Center for Automotive Research. Matt Myron is a director that handles things that have to do with advanced manufacturing and supply chain management at Forvia. And you know, Matt, when we talk about manufacturing, what comes to people's minds are stamping presses or welding robots or painting robots. You're talking about augmented reality, virtual, virtual reality, mixed media. Explain that to me, because I don't put that together with manufacturing. For sure, for sure. So in our digital uh, transformation that we have, uh, really looking at how do we bring the augmented reality, the virtual reality to the factories. So doing pre-production type of planning where we can build the assembly line in a virtual reality, put on some headsets and walk the assembly line, and basically really validate is it a good flow, is it good ergonomics for the operator, and really trust that what we're implementing in a computer on an AutoCAD drawing is going to work when we put it in production. What's the advantage of AR and VR versus traditional ways? I mean, you, you could have done this with little paper knockouts, right? Or you could have done it on a computer screen. What's the value of AR and VR? So really being immersive, really uh, jumping into the technology, having the uh, experience of the operator walking the floor, having the supervisors, the plant teams come and, and really experience the floor. And it's a lot less expensive. So in the end, if we need a modification to the machine, whether we load it from the left side, whether we load it from the right side, or if we need to make the machine wider or longer, we can do that virtually for a lot less cost as opposed to uh, doing it with a physical machine once it ends up on the shop floor. How long have you been doing it? What are the results? So we've been in the uh, virtual reality space for about five years now. So what we really see is uh, quicker product launches, lower cost of our CapEx, so we see less engineering changes that we're doing uh, when we're implementing the machines, when we're implementing the solutions on the shop floor. So really time and cost, which is the biggest drivers, right? How hard is it to train people to be able to use this? Uh, so uh, they're, they're just like Oculus classes. So you see everyone's kids are probably using them. So now it's a, a time for the adults and the engineers to kind of jump on board with this technology. Uh, they're quite easy to use. Uh, they're very intuitive. They come with the handles and the pedals where you can uh, move yourself around, walk through the assembly line. Uh, so in the end, uh, they're quite intuitive. Where do you take it from here? So when, really when we're looking at the next step, so the next step is now how do we give the operators in the shop floor once they're running production the tools to succeed. So now we're even looking at mixed reality glasses. So we're using the Microsoft HoloLens. We have them in about 100 plants globally so far. And that's br bringing the remote expert assistance to the shop floor and really giving the ability to troubleshoot quickly, uh, save a uh, flight over from across, across the sea to uh, bring the remote expert assistance to the shop floor. Then as the next step, we can take it for the preventative maintenance and the maintenance teams to really give them a step-by-step -step instruction where they can walk through on the glasses, where it'll show them videos, pictures, et cetera, to really help uh, bring that time of preventative maintenance down. How's it been uh, working with people on the shop floor with these Oculus glasses? What's been the reaction? So for sure, there's a training curve. Uh, getting used to it, getting used to that type of technology, that type of augmentation. We came from years ago where it was all paper maintenance uh, instructions, where they were flipping through manuals and books and that type of thing. So really getting them used to the new tools. But once they get used to it, once they get more comfortable with it, once they see the intricacies of it and the advantages of it, then they find that it's a lot more attractive to have. So take us out a little bit into the future. Is this going to be in every manufacturing facility? Uh, so the plan is for sure. So then now you can envision when we start to layer up a digital twin of the factory. So the digital twin of the factory is basically replicating all the process parameters that we have of our machines, the material flow, the material levels, and then being able to display those in the glasses or being able to display them onto an iPad. And then can you give some sort of predictive analytics? Can you give actions, incitable actions, where you want to look at, OK, go to this production area. That's where your trouble is. That's where you're going to run out of parts. Hey, this machine may be down. Where can you send help? So really giving that predictive analytics to help augment the operators and give them the, the information they need. Boy, I'm telling you, the, the factory floor sure is changing from the days when I used to walk through a plant. For sure, for sure. It's exciting times. Matt, thanks much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. 